welcome to uh, second to last Libra Arts Test Club for this month. Um, they go by fast. Um, so today we'll talk about a proposal that I'm making at Libra and then also uh, we'll learn about OpenScapes, um, which um, um, I actually interacted with them yesterday and, uh, and a lot of their ideas align with what I'm thinking of. So if you go to our um, uh, spreadsheet, you'll find the links for both the presentation I'll show and the paper that we'll, um, that I'll mention too. So um, let me put this full screen. So, um, so uh, this is a proposal that I made um, um, to a working group from computational biologists at Lieber, um, and I'm uh, that I'm uh, going to do, uh, but I'm also going to present to the Lieber leadership, and not in this format, but um, similar ideas. So if you have any feedback, please let me know. So this is about another uh, uh, type of data science group, um, and so currently you can ask yourself, what is the role of the data science group? And so. Um, a lot of people will tell you, well, the role of a data science group is to uh, perform analysis, right? To answer data related questions. Um, and then some people might also mention like, well, they also need to stay updated, right? On new methods and software. So there's potentially like two big tasks, right? Like uh, perform analysis and maybe go to some conferences and learn uh, or take some courses. Uh, but um, um, we've, we've We've seen that there's, you know, in biology, there's even more and more data nowadays than there used to be. A lot of our experiments generate a lot of data. Um, and there's also a lot of software tools to use to analyze the data. Um, and here I'm just showing like our studio by connected to GitHub. There's a lot more. So overall, there's a greater demand for data analysis skills with like wrangling of data, visualization of data, analysis of it. And the Institute itself, Liber, uh, generates a lot of uh, results that are themselves the, the large data collections um, that um, are uh, sometimes difficult to explore. Um, and so overall in the Institute, there's a greater demand from the scientists to learn how to work with data. So what I'm proposing that the role of a data science group could be is to, yes, perform analysis and stay updated on new methods and software, but also provide guidance to others on how to navigate this world of data science, abbreviated as DS. Um, and then also to collaborate as part of the scientific team. So that really means like understanding the data generation process and working with a team of biologists um, from, um, uh, from the get-go. So this is a proposal that I want to do the, for my team to do. And uh, I mean, and I was saying that other teams could also do this. Um, is to in incorporate like individual data science guidance sessions, but also some general training. And I'll go a bit more into the details of this. So the guidance sessions are based on my uh, experience as an MPH capstone teaching assistant for three years. And the idea is in these sessions, you give ideas and feedback, but you don't actually do the analysis for people. So someone will give you a question, you'll prepare a little bit before the meeting. Uh, then during the meeting, you'll, um, uh, have some links prepared, or maybe they're showing you some code, or maybe they're showing you a plot, and they just want some feedback on how they can make it better, or how could, they, or maybe they just have a question on how they can do X or Y type of analysis, and you'll guide them, you'll you'll work with them during that uh, meeting, but then um, then they can go um, um, and during the rest of the week they can work on on um, on uh, answering the question that they had, and maybe the next week they can come back and. Um, ask follow-up questions, but this is um, a different type of, uh, uh, of meeting. It's not like a, you're being a consultant or a service unit, right? You're not actually doing the analysis for, for other people. You're, uh, you'll help them for that in a 25 minute period, um, but then um, um, uh, but then you, you, know, you give them room and time to, to make progress on their, on their project. Um, so these sessions involve some preparation time and also some post-meeting time where you uh, can uh, create a session log and uh, we can have an internal website such that everyone, else, everyone that's part of this team that's helping others kind of see how people are answering questions and we can um, you know, uh, learn from each other also and be, um, 
be more homogeneous as a team. Then there's also the general training through like this uh, LIBD Art Stats Club. Um, and there's also a plan of making um, a public facing uh, knowledge based website that shows like a lot of the things that uh, we, uh, we can do. So uh, the actual, a bit more details on how the sessions would work is that I'm thinking that they would first meet with me after you know having a question and then I would assign them to someone. So let's say someone has a question about like Gypsy and like processing pipelines. And so for in that scenario, maybe Nick is the, the uh, most adequate base person. And so I can uh, point them to Nick. Nick can then meet with the person for a, another 25 minute session, or you know potentially we could have longer 50 minute sessions in, in case they're needed. And then they will look back as, as needed, either with Nick or me. Um, and so this involves like having a, a session guidance training. So how to actually do these sessions uh, for the team that would you know be helping. Um, and involves like um, like uh, communication through Slack, and uh, also like a weekly meeting to discuss these requests and um, um, and you know provide this constant uh, training on how to handle the different situations. And they would have access to this private session uh, logs. We would also have like a code of conduct that people would need to respect when they're interacting with us um, um, to to uh, provide like a collegial basis. Um, um, and so some anticipated session topics are like, well, people might want to ask, how can they access a given data set or understand its structure? Um, there will be a lot of questions about visualizations, um, also some statistical modeling, maybe computer setup and reproducibility in data science, learning an R by a conductor, debugging code, or understanding like errors from um, R, R errors, understanding R objects, maybe help with Linux or just more general questions about like file formats, bioinformatics, or um, concepts and jargon in general. So those are some of the things I'm, I think this um, group could help with in general. And so some, some side effects of this uh, type of group is that, um, first of all, for the people doing it, in order to teach, you need to learn. So learning has to be included in, in, in as part of the, time for learning has to be included in, as part of this group. And then you also learn differently if you know that you are going to teach uh, the concepts later. And in my personal career, I've, uh, I've learned the most when I'm teaching because uh, then I pay more attention. Um, um, then through the sessions, we can then identify like needs for internal R packages or software. Uh, I think we could also break silos. So maybe a lot of people work individually. Um, and so I think this can help improve the environment overall. And this is a, a little bit of like uh, leading by example, or what I call it here, le leading by convincing. So um, uh, it's a lot easier to convince other people to change early on on the life of a project than later on. So maybe we're like, oh, like we think that, um, you know, X tool is better than Y for doing this type of analysis. Because it like, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it does a better job at correcting some errors. And so it's easier to tell that to people and convince them to change early on than like after months or years of doing a, a project, right? Um, and so we could also like look at their plots and be like, hey, have you checked X and Y? Um, like um, and provide some critical feedback there. Um, instead of like getting a paper that is done and it's just about to get submitted and they're like, hey, can you check it? Um, um, so I think this is a, uh, People, I think, will be more receptive to changes if we help them from the beginning than at the end. Um, um, so th this group setup and this protected time I'm proposing should be 20%. Um, so uh, for us, for the people doing it, this can also have benefits because then we can identify projects that we really want to work on even more, and then we can set up a collaboration to continue uh, to work on that. Um, um, I think it will also help uh, train current group members. So basically like leveling, leveling up our data science capacity. Um, because um, maybe let's say uh, Luis knows something that Nick doesn't know, uh, but, uh, but the Nick can you know, teach also something to Luis. And so we can all learn more things. Um, everyone will still be specializing in, you know, in their specific uh, projects, but, uh, but overall we can all gain more skills. And so that will enable delegating 
data science tasks and training whenever we have a new person. Um, if we have more people instead of just me doing it, um, then we're going to have more capacity to build like nicer tools, websites, and training materials. Um, I think overall this will reduce bottlenecks by reducing concentration because there, there's going to be more people that can help with a lot of these questions instead of like just one person. And um, I think uh, for the institute, this would provide like a critical mass then to have an um, uh, institute-wide effect. So let's say if I do this and I only have four minutes per week, I can only help like four people per week. But if it's like uh, five of us and all of us have four minutes per week, right? That's 20 minutes per week and that, and an institute that has like 100, 100 to 150 people, and that's, that's quite a bit of people that we can help. Um, I think by like having also this, um, um, some training materials um, uh, publicly available, that's also gonna increase our exposure and uh, hopefully also recruit talent to Libre because they'll be like, they'll notice that this is a place where they can keep learning because maybe they know some things about art but not all the things we know or some things about data science. And so maybe they wanna come to us to keep learning um, and, uh, but they, may, they might know other things that we don't know so they can contribute to, to, to us too. And I think, I mean, the question at the end is, is will this improve the environment and the productivity? Um, uh, I think so, but like, uh, I think also time will tell, right? Um, um, uh, uh, and I, uh, I think that protected time goes both ways. Um, so you need time to learn, guide, and build this training material, but you also need time to, for collaborating, right? Because um, sometimes people assume that like, oh, you're, you know, you're like, want to help, and then they ask, they send you a lot of help requests. And so that 20% can grow, but also like maybe there's pressures to finish some results and stuff. And so maybe these 80% can grow, right? Um, and we have a limited 100% time, right? Uh, uh, unless you uh, want to work 24 um, seven. Um, so I think it's important to respect both and to plan accordingly. So that's part of uh, what I'll uh, try to convince leadership to do. I actually copy pasted this pink square so it could, would be exactly 100%. <laughs> um, so I think this can also help with some of the points that uh, Julio Pergola uh, and other people uh, noticed. Um, and uh, I mean, and these are just some um, uh, like in discussion points that, uh, that Julio wanted to bring up and, his, uh, and the people he interviewed. So I think it, this will also help like the, the feeling of doing good science because we will teach like good reproducibility practices. Um, and we'll have more connection to people. Um, 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 and I think it will help break some of the silos. Although uh, we talked about this with Julio, um, I don't actually agree with like what's mentioned here about uh, uh, that team specific practices can be bad. I actually think they can be good if we, we believe that we found like, let's say the best way to handle a specific type of data. So the example I mentioned was a summarized experiment. Maybe that's the best R object for handling like expression data. And, uh, but through this structure, we could have then the opportunity to teach others how to actually work with that type of data um, um, instead of saying like, oh, read the, read the manual, right? Um, so that's, uh, those are the slides I had. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot this one. This is with feedback from, um, from several of you. Uh, and I've been trying to get as much feedback as I can before talking to leadership. So that's the approach I've taken. Um, um, so let me uh, let me stop recording. Give me a second to find the Zoom thing. Um, uh, okay. So the next thing I wanted to show is. Uh, a paper from a group called OpenScapes. Um, so they invited me to a meeting yesterday and they're gonna write a blog post about it, which I'll share once it's um, completed. But OpenScapes comes from um, scientists doing environmental science and they wanted to work together. Um, and this is like not in a single institution, this is across institutions at this point. Um, and so one of the things they did is they wrote a column for nature, um, um, which I found really interesting. And I actually read this after I made my the 
presentation on Wednesday. And maybe I should have read it before. Um, so here they say they came up with a plan, a 10 week plan for uh, improving like uh, open data science in your, um, in your field or your group. Um, and so um, some of the things they mentioned here are things we know how to do, but maybe not everything. And I thought it could be interesting to go over their 10 week plan. So I'm gonna uh, you know, skip some of the motivation of why they're doing this um, and jump a little bit straight to the plan. Um, I mean, I recommend reading um, this um, uh, opinion piece, but um, I thought that maybe we could borrow some of these ideas and see where we want to do them as part of the Legal Arts Tax Club. So let me increase the font. So. Um, can all read it um, more easily. You're not sharing it yet. Oh, I thought I was sharing. Uh, uh, thanks. All this time I was like, look at this, look at that. <laughs> okay, so sorry. So let me go to the top of, um, so I was showing, uh, I, I showed a little bit the OpenScapes website and that they do environmental science. Um, and then I jumped to this nature column from uh, last year where talk, they're talking about a 10 week plan for open data science. Um, and then I skipped through some of the motivation of why they think this is important to do. Um, and at the end, they have a, their 10 week plan for open data science, which I thought we could go through and maybe we can borrow some of their ideas for the RSTS club. Or maybe, maybe you consider that we should do them um, uh, separately from the Arts Science Club. So um, what they show here is they show uh, their plan involves a question per week. Um, what are the long-term goals? They give you something to read. And sometimes it could be a paper from them. This is a per in particular, this is a paper they wrote uh, related to the beginnings of uh, open escapes. Um, and some of the uh, proposals they have there. And then uh, they ask here some uh, questions for discussion. So if we were to do this, uh, we could like agree to, to, let's say like, let's do week one, right, for next week. So everyone reads that paper, um, uh, explores maybe some of the tools, and then we can um, go over the paper in the session, in the RSS club session, and then um, discuss the questions that they have proposed. So first, the first week is, uh, what is the workflow for open data science? Um, and how can you transition into doing open data science? Um, week two is how do we store and share data, methods and code? Um, um, and then they ask, the discussion is like, you know, look, what are the current systems that you have? And I, don't, I know that Libra has a, a group meaning about uh, data sharing, right? But this could be useful to, to explore even, even in, a, in the smaller context of, let's say, your lab or your analysis that you're doing and the team that you're working on. Um, then another one is like, what are our values um, as a team? Um, and they talk a lot about teams instead of uh, labs. Because um, uh, in teams, people are like uh, talking to each other more instead of maybe a lab hierarchy. Um, um, so how do we build trust? How do we uh, uh, facilitate collaboration? Um, and then they're like, oh, maybe we need to create a code of conduct or a work working agreement. In our case, we already have a code of conduct, but we could like adapt our current code of conduct, for example, um, refine it. Um, how do we streamline other aspects of our research, so that's presentations and teaching? So um, here they say like, oh, let's look at uh, Google Slides, for example, Google Drive, and um, I know several of us have been using Google Slides lately, but we don't have a, a, a Libre template as far as I know for Google Slides. So we, maybe, you know, that could be an activity that we do one week. Um, um, how do I collaborate easily with other people in uh, remote or different time zones? This is a paper from 2019. <laughs> so, uh, um, we've probably learned a lot about this. So they, here they talk about GitHub for project management, which is something I like to do. And the people that, have, that work with me directly um, have, you know, already experienced some of this. Um, 
uh, uh, which version of my code was I using for it, where it is. So this is like we want to think about the future, you know, the future you or the future us as a team. Um, so it's about like version control. Um, then another one is like, well, what if I'm running into code from other people and I can't understand it, right? Um, and so here we might, you know, take some share, adopt some shared practices on how to actually write our code, how to document it such that it's a bit more consistent across the people that are writing the code. So I've, I actually wrote like a little function in one of my packages for doing something like this. And I mentioned it to people, but uh, it's actually not really being used much by, by, by you. Uh, so maybe we can revise this and also see other options that are there, out there. Um, how can we record and organize data to streamline analysis? So maybe this is where we start talking also about the here, the here package also a little bit um, um, and like um, uh, we can have a conversation about how to name files actually. There's a, um, there's a pretty good um, presentation on this topic that I saw once. Um, and I mean, and this is, a, this is actually a paper from uh, Carl Roman, Carl Roman and uh, Carl Wu. And Carl Roman was a, a, a faculty member at the Department of Biostatistics at Hopkins. Um, before he moved to Madison, Wisconsin. And Kara Wu, um, uh, she's uh, pretty famous in the R world um, and works in Seattle, or oh, for a company in Seattle. Um, I think she lives in Oregon now. Um, anyway, they have thought a lot about these type of topics. Um, and so uh, that paper could be interesting. Um, week nine, they're like, uh, how do we help new members? How you know, learn and, and retain continuity when people leave. So um, they talk about um, like onboarding, um, what could we do to help people? Um, so we already have an onboarding website, but it's kind of old and like as part of the things that I'm proposing to do uh, is like a, a nicer website um, that is a knowledge-based website. So. Uh, I mean, this, it will be longer than an hour, but we could think about what are the things everyone in the group thinks um, should, that document should outline, right? Uh, what are the things they would like to see there? Uh, but after maybe reading some of this. Finally, they're like, how do we continue learning and improving uh, to work together? Um, and here they talk about like, let you know, maybe you wanna find other groups and other communities that you can go and learn from. Um, and what other allies you have. Um, and so they might say like, uh, they might suggest like creating a, a club, which we already have, right? This is the Liber Arts Club meeting. Um, but, um, um, uh, but maybe there's uh, other things that, uh, uh, you know, we can talk and, and um, or maybe that some of you don't know, uh, for example, let's say maybe you don't know about Our Ladies Baltimore, right? Um, or other things, and so we can mention those. Um, so it's a full time week plan, um, and um, that's something we could do. Uh, um, oh, all these meeting reminders. Um, um, uh, but um, I mean, I wanted to show it, and uh, you know, uh, uh, just um, um, you know, you know, please read it and let me know what you think. Um, uh, and it, we don't need to necessarily do this every single week because we could also alternate with like, um, we got a request to learn how to do a differential expression analysis, um, which I thought uh, we've shown a little bit of or different components of it. We've had a session on like summarized experiment. We had a session on Lima uh, that Keenan led, Keenan Jade led, uh, but maybe you can uh, you know, try to put it together in a couple of sessions because it's, it's more material than a single session, <laughs> uh, how to do a differential expression analysis. Um, um, so that's something that I think we could maybe alternate with this. Um, 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 so that's one proposal. Um, I don't know what you think, uh, or you, or you think like maybe we, maybe, the, maybe people can do this separately instead of doing it through the art club. Um, um, although I think we have a pretty uh, good group for doing some of these activities. Um, 
Cool. So with that, I'm going to stop recording for today.